Hello world, and we are back. My name is Kyle Fischel, and this could be episode 144 of my poker vlog. For this one, I play a 2-5 session at Sarasota, Florida, the One-Eyed Jacks Poker Club. I have a ton of hands to go over, but before I get into them, I want to give a quick shout out to PokerCoaching.com. Honestly, I was on a 3K downswing, if you've seen the videos, and I thought I needed a little bit of help with my game, and I actually downloaded a 7-day free trial of PokerCoaching.com. And then after going through some material on it, I went on a 4K upswing very quickly. And you'll see the, those results in the videos coming forward. I specifically learned a lot from the John Little Masterclass and the J-Win Crushing Loose Cash Games segments. Yeah, this is really not a paid promotion or a sponsorship. However, if Jonathan Little ever sees this, I'm very easy to find. Feel free to patch me up. Be great. I'm sure I'll be sprinkling in some more nuggets of information that I learned from this site across my next few videos so stay tuned for that and without further ado let's roll the tape so we arrive at the sarasota poker room this day at the 2-5 table we decide to buy in for one thousand dollars and on the first hand of note we're in early position we raised to twenty dollars with ace queen offsuit the big blind and a later position player decide to call so we are going three ways to a flop which comes 10 7 6 two spades we do have the ace of spades so somewhat relevant block the nut flush draw but this is a board i'm not going to connect to in general it's much better for callers and limp callers ranges so we're just going to start this one out with a check and see what develops the late position player and the big blind decide to check as well so we're still going three ways to a turn card which is the jack of spades great card gives us the nut flush draw gives us a gut shot to us pretty strong straight probably throw out a bet on this one but we don't get the chance to because the big blind bets 35 dollars with my exact holding i think it's fine to raise i think it's fine to call realize some equity on this particular hand i choose to just call this time and reevaluate on the river the late position player folds so we are heads up to river card which does not improve us four of clubs we brick everything and my opponent decides to bet 85 dollars at this point, I think it's fine if you want to turn your hand into a bluff, but it's early on in the session. This is the first hand I've played. Not trying to get out of line too early, so we're just going to let this one go and wait for a better spot. Although having the nut flush blocker, plenty fine to do something creative here. Maybe on the next one. Following that, we're in middle position. We have pocket sevens. I raised to $20. A later position player three bets me to 75 and then it folds back to me. My opponent in this hand has one of the wider three betting ranges at the table. Definitely not a nit, so we're happy to give him action. We can flop sets. We can flop boards that favor us over a three better. We have a lot of playability with pocket sevens, so we decided to make the call for $75. And when we're heads up to a flop, we flop a set on 10, 8, 7, two hearts. Beautiful board for my hand. Beautiful board for my range. So if bet into i'm definitely gonna raise this one but when i check my opponent checks it back all right no money and when we flop a set that's not what we're looking for and the turn is the six of hearts initially a bad looking card but i very much doubt my opponent would ever check back ace x of hearts or king x of hearts anything like that so we can rule out a lot of flushes from his range here and go for some pretty th safe value here he should never really have a nine in range either as played but we can get value from like aces kings queens with one heart ace king with one heart ace queen with one heart many hands will pay off a bet here so we're gonna bet somewhat small as the best i can get paid off by is over pairs so I bet $75, about half pot, looking to build this pot and go for some value on the river. But my opponent decides to fold, saying this is a horrible board for his hand. I tend to agree, and we ship our first hand of the day. Following that, an under-the-gun player raises to 20. There's one caller. I'm on the small blind with 9-10 of diamonds, and I make the call as well. So we go three ways to a flop of ace eight seven one diamond so we flop an open-ended backdoor diamonds feels pretty good we're in the small blind we're going to check it to the aggressor the pre-flop aggressor who is the under the gun player decides to bet 55 dollars makes sense he has all the aces in range so i think continuation betting on this board makes a lot of sense from him but we're not going anywhere with open-ended plus backdoor diamonds we make the call and the other player decides to fold so we're going heads up to a turn card which is a five of diamonds we turn a diamond draw feels great i think we can go for a check raise here if my opponent bets here i have all the two pairs in range i have the made straights i have all the sets i can get a single ace in a lot of trouble if my opponent decides to bet this turn here but when i check my opponent checks it back so we're actually going heads up to a river card which is the seven of clubs so we break our monster draw fucking amazing huh and we're first to act as we're in the small blind. I think this is a good card to bet on. I have all the two pairs in range. I have all the full houses, made straights. 
And if my opponent was able to get some showdown with like king queen off suit, king jack, pocket tens, that would just be horrendous. All those hands would, I think would fold to a bet here. So we're definitely going to throw it out. We bet $120. Thinking this board is much better for a small blind caller than an under the gun opener. And our thoughts are proven correct as my opponent eventually folds. Feels great to get this one through. 10 high was probably not the best hand, but we end up scooping the pot anyway. And now it's actually looking good. In for a thousand. We got about 125 of profit so far. Been a while since I've seen profit, so love to see it here. Before I'm in middle position with Queen Jack of Clubs, I raised to $20. The cutoff is the only caller, so we're going heads up to a flop of Jack 732 Spades. Even though there's a flush draw out there, this can be one of those times I turn a top pair good kicker into a check call hand. I choose to check to my opponent. He bets out $35. Quite a sizable bet. As there's an obvious flush draw out there and some gut shot straights possibilities, it could be possible he's protecting against all that. Could be possible he has one of those in zero showdown value. Either way, as played, choosing to put my hand to a check call, we're just going to check call this one. And we turn a queen of diamonds. So we're pretty happy. We think we have the nuts here pretty handily. Hoping my opponent bets this turn card so we can raise. But when I check it to him, he decides to check it back. So I'm disappointed not put more money in here when we turn two pair. But either way, we're heads up to river card, which is the six of spades. Not my favorite as 4-5 gets there and the obvious spade draw gets there, but I think this is a board where I definitely want to bet here myself. I think it's unlikely my opponent would check back turns with just spades and zero showdown value. And if he did decide to do that, I'm calling a river bet anyway. So I think it's better to bet here myself and if raised to like a ridiculous amount, consider folding. But we definitely don't want this to check through with like jack nine off suit. We want to get some value in here. So I bet $70. And my somewhat thin value bet of, seems to work out as my opponent, after thinking for a little bit, eventually decides to put in the call. I show the queen jack, and it is good. We scoop a decent-sized pot, and we are definitely trending in the right direction. Next hand of note. With one limp, I'm in mill position. I raise to $20. One late player and the limper calls as well, so we're going three ways to a flop. Holding jack 10 of diamonds feels pretty good on the queen 9-6 one diamond board. As I am the preflop aggressor and I'm first to act, I'm going to go for a C bet. I bet $30. Only the early position limp caller decides to call. So we're going heads up to a turn card, which is a bink king of diamonds. We turn the nuts with a flush redraw. Feels pretty good. Not too happy that's the king specifically. I think an eight would be better for me as if my opponent had queen X. It's going to be tough to get a whole lot of value out of him. And because that's the hand I'm most targeting, I'm going to bet small here. Hoping that a queen will put up on $50, that's what I choose to bet. And after a very small amount of time, my opponent decides to call the $50. Happy about that. Hoping for a brick river card, which this time we finally get a four of clubs. We have the actual nuts. Feels like it's been forever since I'm in a spot like this. Definitely want to go for some value, but want to go somewhat small here. Want queen X, maybe queen 10, 9, 10, things like that to pay us off. Don't expect my opponent to have a king all too often. I bet $125, and this apparently is too much, as my opponent folds very quickly. So maybe he had a draw. Maybe he's just not paying off three streets. Either way, we take down another pot. Following that, I'm in early position. I have pocket sevens. I raised to $20. One late position player calls, so we're going heads up to a flop of King Jack 5 Rainbow. As I am first to act, I don't really want to bet this one. I think all my opponents, King X and Jack X, are just going to call, and there's not too many draws out there to get some value from, so we're just going to check and reevaluate based on what my opponent does. My opponent checks it back. Turn is the nine of hearts. If it was almost any other card, I probably would have bet here because the only hand that I can see myself beating is queen 10. That would pay off a any size value bet. But when the nine comes, even that beats me. So now I think I'm relegated to just check fold. When I check, my opponent bets a measly $15. And I decided to just let this one go. There'll be better spots. My opponent can have any pair, can have a mage straight, all kinds of stuff. And my thinking was ironically extremely correct as my opponent shows queen 10 when he folds. So happy with how I played this one, lost the absolute minimum when could have been worse. Could have C-bet flop, could have bluff turn. A lot of landmines on this hand, but we lose the absolute minimum. Following that, I'm in the small blind. The, it folds all the way to the big blind, who bets $15. With ace-king of hearts, definitely going to be a three bet here. I make it 50 
big blind folds and the button decides to call so we're heads up to a flop of queen seven three all diamonds not my favorite queen high is not really the board you're looking for when you have ace king especially monotone without having a diamond here but i also think that this is just gonna miss my opponent a high percentage of the time my opponent had like 10 jack no diamond maybe pocket sixes no diamond any of those hands would all fold to a very small bet even like ace 10 ace jack things like that so I actually think it's a good hand to bet small with, hoping that my opponent just whiffed completely. I bet $35, and my opponent who's on the button puts out $55. To me, it looks very clearly like an accident, like he grabbed two green chips instead of two red chips, but the dealer rules this a min raise to 70. Well, I guess that's that, huh? Whether it's an angle, whether it's an accident, no matter what, ace king of hearts here is just really not a good hand to continue especially out of position we'll never know where we're at my opponent could have a queen could have a random diamond could have a made flush so we're just gonna let this one go and this weird one will just live on in the vlog world i'm always lost by indecision than wrong decision next hand of note and this is a fun one so i'm in the big blind under the gun raises to 20 dollars folds all the way to me i call it with eight six of clubs I feel like a suited gapper is fine to call 15 to win approximately 40. Seems reasonable. And we are heads up to a 7-3 deuce one club board. This board is much better for the big blind. I have all the sets, some two pairs, 4-5, ace-4, ace-5, things like that. So I'm somewhat surprised to see the under the gun player bet $30. Either way, back to our straight draw, back to our flush draw. Tons of equity, tons of cards that can help me out here. I'm going to make the call. And if I could pick the best card in the deck for me to hit, it would be the five of clubs, which comes. I wish I would use my one time in a different scenario, not a $60-ish 2-5 pot, more lucrative than that. But either way, here it is. Also would have wished that my one time is used for a hand that actually makes me a hand, not just a draw. Either way, when we hit the ginnest of cards and we, we turn 17 outs, we do not want this to check through. If my opponent had random over cards, this is going to be a good spot for me to bluff at. I bet $90. Yes, the donk lead is happening here. This board is much better for a big blind. I have all the sets, all the two pairs now. I have made straights of 6-4. I have 6-8 of clubs, evidently. So this is definitely going to be one of those spots where I throw out the, the donk lead. I can pile in on any river that completes my hand. And the ones that don't, I can just pretty safely check fold to any over pairs my opponent could possibly have but this bet also puts ace x and like tens nines jacks in a really tough spot because i'm repping a very strong hand at this point and after a very long tank my opponent literally talks out loud says he has no idea what i'm doing can't believe i just donk led and eventually fold i'm definitely going to show this one it's pretty fun to win a hand with eight high so happy to take this one down think that this is one of the few spots where a donk lead makes a lot of sense Following that, I'm in early position. I raised to $20 with pocket kings. Only one middle position player calls, so we are going heads up to a flop of 10, 8, 7, 2 spades. I have the king of spades, so not too worried about the flush draws out there. This board does not connect with my range too often, but I think the pot's small enough, and I have enough hand strength to just go for a bet here. Be great if my opponent folded like ace jack off suit ace five off suit i can get rid of all my opponent's hands that have a decent amount of equity against me and still get value from like single 10x 8x sixes nines things like that so i bet 20 dollars. my opponent calls and the five of diamonds is not the greatest card it is two tones so you could make an argument for going for some value against either of the flush draws but there's plenty of two pairs my opponent could have my opponent could have 6-9, 6-4, 9 jack. They have all the straights and two pairs. So I think this is fine to check and reevaluate based on what my opponent does. When I check, my opponent checks it back. And the river is a bink king of hearts. So there's no chance we don't have the best hand here. My opponent would never check back a mage straight. So we can comfortably go for some value here. But the question is sizing. I think we have to go small here. The Having pocket kings, my opponent can never really have a king. So we're hoping to get value from second pair at best. So I'm going to go really small here. I bet $35. And it turns out my sizing was pretty good as my opponent calls with jack 10 of spades. So we actually had a monster amount of equity and probably would have paid off all three streets. But happy with how I played this one. Happy to get value on the river. So we'll take this one down. 
At this point, we're up like 200 something dollars. Feels good, I've been on a terrible downswing recently if you've seen my previous videos. Happy to book a win. I put the camera away before another hand of note sneaks up on me. I bun straddle, I look down at pocket kings. The under the gun player raises to 30. Because I folds to me and I'm under the button with kings, I three bet, I make it $85. Then the under the gun player makes it 295. Things have a momentum of their own. Well, in this scenario, if my opponent has aces and I have kings the moment I'm about to leave, I guess here's the money, sir. I, I just can't fold this one. So I just go all in, hoping to be against queens because I block the ace king pretty heavily and I don't block aces. So thinking it's aces or queens, I jam and my opponent snap calls. Ask me if I want to run it twice. I am always a two times person. I show the kings and he shows pocket queens. So we are going to two runouts, have a massive favorite, and let's see the runouts. First run out, extremely clean. Second run out. We get to the turn, need to fade just a queen and queen alone for about a $1,400 pot, and the river is clean. We win a massive pot to pretty much end the session. Gonna book a small win. Now we're booking a decent win. Feel unbelievably happy. We finally got on the right side of a cooler. Feels really great. Now the stack's looking amazing. In for 1K. Got about 1,700 in front of us. One final hand before I left, because I did not want to leave right after stacking someone. Played for a few more laps. Folds all the way to me on the button. I have ace king off suit. I raised to $20. Wish I would have straddled this time as well. Would have been sick. But the big blind is the only caller. So we're going heads up to a flop of 665 rainbow. This is a board where my opponent's going to miss a lot of the time. Ace king should be good. So I'm going to go for a closer to pot size bet. I bet $35 and my opponent calls. Turn is the six of diamonds. Honestly, a great card for ace king. Ace king has a ton of value here. It's likely the best hand. I can bet again and get my opponent to fold all his random overcards, jack 10, 8, 7, 9, 10, random overcards. He's calling with all pocket pairs and all fives, but everything else we are beating, so we're going to go for another bet. We bet $80, and my opponent snap folds 7, 8 off suit. So definitely a good result on this one to end the day, and we are in the game for $1,000, out of the game for $1,762 which is a profit of 762 across five hours equates to $152 an hour or 30 big blinds an hour. Well, if you made all the way to this point, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for sticking with me. Feels like every time you get in Kings all in pre, they are running into aces. So I wasn't really expecting much on this one, but really happy to run into Queens here. Feel great about that. I think I'm going for value a little bit thinner in some places, which is getting paid off as well. So that's helped me out a ton. Hopefully the run good and somewhat playing better continues as we move forward. And I will see you all in the next one.